Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants. I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, man. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal on this channel, man. We must continue to set the record straight, stop the lies, stop the narratives, stop them from rewriting the history. And in this video, we're going to speak about LeBron James and how the playoffs, they just seem to be better without LeBron James and the goof troop out there. You know, the other players of the LeBron James era. It just seems to be better, more entertaining, better to watch the NBA playoffs without LeBron James and his goofball antics and his goof troop out there. And we're going to talk about this video, guys. And I want to thank you guys, everyone across the world, everyone across the states that's been supporting my channel. Once again, guys, I am truly, truly humbled, guys. Much respect to all you guys out there. Like I said, a lot of you guys have been asking me, commenting, and asking me about donating to my channel. I do not get mon I am not monetized through YouTube. Uh, I probably won't be monetized again until uh, till July, if possible, if at all. Um, but in the meantime, if you felt the need to donate, I told you guys I do not solicit for money, but you guys have been asking me. There's a, uh, a link to PayPal in the description of my channel. If you feel the need to donate, you could donate through the PayPal link in the description, guys. Shout out to all you guys out there, for real. <clears throat> and you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, I wanted to talk about how much fun the playoffs have been without LeBron James and the goof troop. LeBron James' antics and his goof troop. And when I talk about the goof troop, what am I talking about, man? Well, I'm talking about these soft, sensitive fools that we're tired of watching in the playoffs. Right? We're done with these guys. We're talking about LeBron James. We're talking about the Kevin Durants. We're talking about the James Hardens. I even, I even throw a Joel Embiid in there, even though I, I don't consider him a LeBron James era player. I'm just tired of his antics. He carries himself like a fool. Right? He's a flopping fool. Always crying and moaning about stuff, man. But without LeBron James, Kevin Durant, the James Hardens, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, without these fools in the playoffs, the NBA is just better. It's a better overall product now. And you can tune into a lot of these games. You can listen to the broadcasts somewhat. Some of these guys still must bring up LeBron James. Like I told you, Stan Van Gundy the other day. But guys like J.J. Redick are still hard to listen to. The Reggie Millers of the world. Um, their broadcasting acumen is very annoying uh, to listen to these guys because they say a bunch of narratives and nonsense. But when we're talking about the overall feel of the playoffs, it's a much better atmosphere without LeBron James and those antics flopping all over the court, crying and moaning to the referees, right? Getting all these phantom calls. We don't have to worry about these things. You don't have to worry about LeBron James standing around on defense with the shoulders shrugged, palms up in the air with that stupid look on his face. You don't got to see LeBron James pouting and moaning on the bench. You don't have to see LeBron James soaking, standing still in the court while his team plays four and five on the other side. You don't got to watch this. You don't have to deal with this nonsense. We don't have to deal with any of these things. We don't have to worry about the referees trying to rig the games for LeBron James to help him and his team get through. We don't have to worry about this anymore. We don't have to worry about LeBron James' punk fans, right? Talking about, yo, if LeBron James win a championship this season, he's the GOAT. If LeBron James does this, if, 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 if. LeBron James creates one big if. One big if. That's what it is. That's all you hear LeBron James fans say. Oh, if LeBron James does this, if LeBron James every season is the same thing. So if this year he does this, they don't do it. The next thing is the same thing. If LeBron James does this year, then he's the GOAT. Then doesn't do it that year. Then the next year, if he does it this year, he's the GOAT. We don't have to deal with any of that stuff anymore. We don't got to listen to Kendrick Perkins talk about LeBron James and the Lakers' playoff chances and their title hopes. We don't got to listen to Nick Wright anymore. We don't have to worry about uh, J.J. Redick and the Gilbert Arenas talking about these guys during the playoff run. We don't have to do this anymore. We don't got to look at Kevin Durant's ugly game, uh, uh, ugly face. We have to listen to Kevin Durant nonsensical post-game press conferences. These guys don't know how to speak on the microphone. They're a bunch of idiots. You ever hear Kevin Durant speak? Kevin Durant really thinks that he's a god. Didn't he call himself a basketball god? He's a joke. A basketball god who's damn near seven feet tall, these long arms, can't rebound more than seven rebounds a game, but you're a basketball god? A basketball god that's never made one all-defensive team, not even one in his career, but you're a basketball god. A basketball god that would have no wins, no championships if he didn't go and team hop on a Steph Curry team. 
Dak 7 came Kevin Durant. He calls himself a god. Kevin Durant is a soft, frail, sensitive mama's boy. That's what he is. I don't respect Kevin Durant's career. I don't respect him. I don't. He's obviously been way more hyped up than he really is worth. People talk about, oh, Kevin Durant, the most skilled offensive player in the history of the game. You'll hear people say these nonsensical things. It don't add up, guys. Kevin Durant, where are the skills on the rebounds? Where are the defensive skills? Where are the leadership skills from Kevin Durant? They're non-existent. They're lacking. Those are called skills that Kevin Durant doesn't have. But he's the most skilled player in the history of the game. Once again, guys, it don't add up. So I'm glad I have to deal with looking at a, a Kevin Durant and his sorry team, the Phoenix Suns, another team that Kevin Durant leads nowhere. Another coach fired from Kevin Durant. Has anyone seen Steve Nash? Has anyone seen Steve Nash? I haven't seen Steve Nash since Brooklyn, since Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and James Harden ran him out of there. Kevin Durant, I do not respect, guys. He's an actual joke to me. And his overall skills, overrated, man. How's Kevin Durant's playmaking skills? Is he one of the great playmakers? No. Stop, man. He's not. He's not. Kevin Durant can shoot the basketball. That's literally where it begins and ends. Shooting the basketball. He does nothing else at a super high level. Not to be com 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 uh, com uh, uh, talked about or touted as the most skilled player of all time. Kevin Durant, really? We're going to go there with this? Stop it, guys. It's an exaggeration of Kevin Durant and the overall skill and game of the players of this era. But once again, we don't have to deal with LeBron James. We don't got to deal with Kevin Durant and his soft, sensitive self. We don't have to worry about Paul George, Pandemic P, and his inconsistent play. We don't have to look, about, look at Kawhi Leonard and his sensitive ass, his frail body. That everyone wants to keep telling me, Kawhi Leonard's this, Kawhi Leonard's that. Kawhi Leonard don't play. All right? That, those are the facts. Kawhi Leonard ain't played consistently for years now. For years. Kawhi Leonard's been in L.A. for what, five seasons? He's been in L.A.? What has he done? He's done nothing in L.A. Literally nothing in L.A. But his fans don't want to hold him to that standard. They don't want to call him out. They'll just come and defend him to me in my comment section. Oh, man, you're just defending Kawhi Leonard. Oh, Kawhi Leonard is Kawhi Leonard that. Kawhi Leonard don't play. Let me know when Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard can play 80 games in a season. Let me know when he does this. Let me know when Kawhi Leonard can play a playoff series without, or go to a playoff without missing games. He's not there, but he gets the money. That's my problem with these guys. See, people are like, oh, man, you're knocking this guy, and Kawhi Leonard's always, I guess, has an injury. He's getting paid, isn't he? He has time to do all these commercials. I see Kawhi Leonard on these New Balance commercials, New Balance. Who the hell wears New Balances, man? Who the hell is going to wear Kawhi Leonard's New Balances? You put those sneakers on, you're going down with an injury. Why would you want to wear those sneakers? But Kawhi Leonard has time to do commercials, to do all this other stuff, but he ain't got no time or energy to play on the games. He, he's, he's too frail to play 80 games, 75 games. It's a joke, man. All this money these guys are paid to play, they're never there. Where was Kawhi Leonard in the postseason? He's out again with some soreness, with some discomfort. I told you Kawhi Leonard has no grit. He won't push through any kind of discomfort or pain. He won't do it, but he wants the money. And then we think about James Harden, another clown playing with a Kawhi Leonard in a pandemic. P. Think about it. You have all three of these idiots on one team, on one team, and the Clippers fans really thought it was going to work? I could have told you from day one, as soon as they got James Harden, it wasn't going to work. I said that. Any team that James Harden goes to is automatically worse. They don't get better. It don't matter. If you put James Harden on the 96 Bulls, they'll be worse. They would be worse with James Harden on the team. Worse. That's how bad he is. That's how bad he is. James Harden has nothing on the basketball court. Nothing. Travels, carries the ball, plays no defense, gives no effort, no heart, no leadership from James Harden, and he's never there when you need him. James Harden could shoot this many threes. He could score that many points in a regular season. As soon as the postseason comes, the true colors come out, he folds up like a lawn chair. And then you see the real James Harden. The dude is a, is a, a straight fraud. James Harden is a fraud. But you had all three of those guys on one team. And they thought they were going to win? It's a joke, man. But think about the playoffs without all these bums, these fools around. It's great. Now you get the young talent. You could watch Nikola Jokic. You could watch the Anthony Edwards, right? You could watch a Jalen Brunson or a Tyrese Halliburton, a Jason Tatum, right? A Donovan Mitchell. 
You could watch some of these guys, the Luka Doncic's of the world, the Kyrie Irvins, the Shea Gilgis Alexanders. You can watch these guys. We get to watch some of the newer talent coming up, the guys that actually want to play the game. And I told you, these guys better not mess it up. Don't be out there flopping around. Don't do it. Don't be team hopping. Don't do it. Do not follow the lead of Kevin Durant, LeBron James, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard. Don't follow these guys' lead. I told you, even a Joel Embiid, I'm glad he's gone. That's riffraff. And all I heard was people making excuses. Oh, Joel Embiid was hurt. He was playing on one leg. He had this. And I don't want to hear it, man. Every year the guy's got something. This isn't just a, a one-time thing. Every year. You're soft. You're frail. There's no excuses, man. You're telling me guys in the past didn't have injuries? They played through pain. They didn't even let you know they were injured. That's the major difference between a lot of these guys today. They always have to let you know they're hurt so they can use that as an excuse, a crutch. Oh, the guy was hurt. This guy's hurt. That guy was hurt. He's dealing with an injury. No one wants to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Larry Bird was hurt. Magic Johnson was hurt. Kareem was hurt. Michael Jordan was hurt. Isaiah Thomas played on one ankle. Come on, man. Like, these guys back in the day didn't have all the advancements of medicine, the treatments, all this stuff. They didn't have the, the travel like these guys do today. And yet still, they were there. They showed up. They toughed it out. They played with grit and heart. All these guys got today is excuses. They're supposed to be bigger, stronger, faster, but they need more excuses. It don't add up, guys. It don't add up. They're supposed to be more skilled, but yet the, the rules are bent in their favor. Don't add up. So I'm so glad that we don't see LeBron James stumbling, bumbling ass out there anymore, crying and moaning, carrying the ball everywhere. I'm so glad that we don't have Kevin Durant's sensitive mama boy ass out there anymore. I'm just tired of these guys. They need to go away. I'm so glad we don't got Pandemic P and frail Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, who's probably one of the biggest embarrassments of the NBA over the last 20, 30 years or so. This man's a complete embarrassment. He's a joke, James Harden. We don't got to deal with those guys anymore. And that makes the NBA playoffs much more fun, exciting, and better to watch, guys. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.